In this video, I'll be discussing the vibrational response of a multi-body spring mass system using MATLAB code I developed as a visual aid. This will include a discussion of mode shapes, their meaning, and how to solve for the mode shapes of a spring mass system from the equations of motion. From a dynamics or vibrations course, you should be familiar with the basic spring mass system, which has a single mass connected to a wall on either side of the spring. In this example, the mass is denoted by the blue dot, where the springs on either side are denoted by the dashed lines. If we give this mass an initial displacement, it will oscillate indefinitely about its equilibrium position. In a real scenario, friction and other dissipative forces would cause the mass to come to a stop. However, for the purposes of discussing the modal response, we're going to be ignoring any dissipative forces. So how do we solve for the motion of this mass? Well, if we have this system here with a mass M and springs on either side of the mass connected to a wall, we can draw a free body diagram as shown, noting that the force exerted by the spring is proportional to its displacement. We can use Newton's second law, F equals MA, and sum the forces in the X direction. Um, then we can rearrange and achieve the following equation with the X terms on the left hand side and a zero on the right side. We can solve for the acceleration, x double dot, but for the purposes of this video, we'll be using the form outlined in red here, uh, where we have all the terms involving x and its derivatives on the left-hand side of the equation. We can add more masses to this problem and end up with a multi-body spring mass system where the motion of each mass affects the other masses. In technical terms, we call this system coupled. We can use Newton's laws of motion to derive the equations of motion for such a system. First, we'll draw the free body diagram for each mass, and then we'll use F equals MA to derive our equations of motion. You can see from the equations of motion for each mass uh, that the acceleration of a given mass is related to the position of its neighboring masses, indicating that this system is indeed coupled. Observing the equations of motion here, uh, we see that a pattern starts to develop um, that we can take advantage of. To better see this pattern, we'll use what's called matrix notation. For a multi-body system, we can write all of the system masses into a single matrix called the mass matrix, and all of the spring constants into a single matrix called the stiffness matrix. For the four-body problem under consideration, our mass matrix and stiffness matrix look as shown on the slide. Note how a pattern seems to develop along the diagonal of the mass matrix, and again along the diagonal of the stiffness matrix. If we assume that all of the carts have the same mass and all of the springs have the same spring constant, then we can write a general form for the mass and stiffness matrices as shown here, where we have the mass M along the diagonal of the mass matrix, and then we have a 2K along the diagonal of the stiffness matrix with negative K on the subdiagonal and along the superdiagonal as well. So we have a nice pattern here that we can take advantage of for an in-mass uh, spring mass system. And note that for an in-mass system, the mass matrix will be n by n, and the stiffness matrix will also be n by n. So there's a set of initial displacements that when applied to the masses yield simple harmonic motion, which is a type of periodic motion where the magnitude of the acceleration is proportional to the distance from the equilibrium position. The set of initial displacements that create this motion are known as a mode shape. For instance, a two mass system has two mode shapes as indicated by this animation. In the first mode, uh, both masses move together, whereas in the second mode, the masses move opposite each other and were displaced the same distance but in opposite directions. Any other displacement ratio will result in non-harmonic motion as shown here. So how do we get these mode shapes? or the initial displacements that result in motion in a given mode. Well, we have the system here in the form mx double dot plus kx equals zero using our matrix notation. If we assume harmonic motion, we can turn this problem into an eigenvalue problem and solve for the resulting natural frequencies and mode shapes, which are related to the eigenvalues and eigenvectors respectively. Going from the equations of motion to the eigenvector problem is not challenging if we make a few substitutions. Let's let x double dot equal lambda x and let x equal phi, where lambda are the eigenvalues and phi are the eigenvectors. From here, we can solve uh, the eigenvalue problem to get our eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Um, so we can 
set it up like this and then rearrange, um, you'll note that there might should be a negative sign in front of the k phi. Uh, however, the math doesn't work out any differently if we include this negative sign. So for convenience, I have left it out. The uh, phi here, our eigenvectors, are related to our mode shapes, whereas lambda, the eigenvalues, are the square of the natural frequencies of each mode. Um, note that for an n mass system, there will be n natural frequencies and n mode shapes. So once you solve this eigenvalue problem and get your eigenvalues and eigenvectors, all you have to do is take the square root of each eigenvalue and you have your natural frequency and take the uh, values in your eigenvector and these are the initial displacements of each mass that will give motion in the nth mode. So what do the modal responses look like for various systems? Well, for a single body system, it's just going to be a sine wave as uh, the mass is displaced initially and then left to oscillate. For a two mass system, uh, we've already discussed this. In the first mode, uh, both masses are displaced an equal amount in the same direction, whereas in the second mode, the masses are displaced an equal amount but in opposite directions. For a three mass system, we have in the first mode, uh, all three masses moving in the same direction, but at different rates. In the second mode, you have the middle mass stationary while the outer two masses move opposing each other. In the third mode, you have the outer two masses moving together at the same rate while the inner mass moves uh, opposing these outer two masses. We can extend this concept to uh, four masses. In the first mode here again, you see that all the masses seem to move together, whereas in the second mode, uh, the right hand and the left hand masses uh, move opposing each other. The third and fourth mode shapes are as shown here. We can extend this concept to an infinitely many number of masses. Here we show seven masses in the seventh mode shape. You can see that uh, three of the masses, the orange, purple, and blue mass, move in one direction, while the blue, yellow, green, and red masses move in the opposite direction. As you increase the number of masses and observe all of the different uh, modal responses, you can see that several patterns will start to develop. Um, and so the motion tends to become somewhat repeatable, if not even predictable, uh, for a higher number of masses in the system. So this is all I have for this video. Um, in my next video, I will discuss uh, the MATLAB code I used to solve the eigenvalue problem and generate these animations. So if you wanna see that, uh, check the video description for a link to that video. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments section and I'll do my best to get back with you. Thank you.